Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC on Friday the 11th of March, the day before Liverpool take on Brighton and Hove Albion down at the Farmer Stadium in what should be a pretty good game. Now, Jurgen Klopp has given his press conference and there's a few things to note from here and thankfully Joanna Durkin over at This Is Anfield has prepared an article for me to go through. Um, Mo Salah's contract remains unresolved and the longer no news emerges, the more concerns grow and Klopp was asked about the situation on Friday. His response did not exactly remove concerns. He said, we cannot do much more. That's how it is. And I don't think it's about that. It's Mo's decision pretty much. The club did what the club can do. There's nothing bad to say about it. It's all fine. Nothing happened further. No signing or rejection or whatever. We just have to wait for that. It's all completely fine. There's no Russian situation. Now, a lot of people have taken this as a negative comment. And of course, his agent has tweeted a load of laughing emojis, which have gotten people all worked up because Rami likes to work people up and get them into a bit of a tizzy. I maintain that this falls in line with what I've been saying. It's Mo's decision, pretty much. I think Mo's decision has been that he's staying. Nothing further happened. No signing or rejection. No further negotiations either. I believe the contract is agreed. It's just not signed. I think they're waiting for Milner to drop off the wage bill because Milner's wage is the difference between what Salah gets and what Salah wants. And I think in the summer, we will see Mo Salah sign a new four-year contract with the Reds. Rami. I think is just trying to wind people up or he may just be laughing because it is already agreed and Klopp hasn't come out and said it. But I do think it is agreed. Uh, COVID concerns. This is not great. Bobby Firmino is back, but Jürgen says there are COVID issues for players and staff. Ibu Kanate has not been in training and obviously missed the game against Inter. Virgil and Thiago were also missing from training, but we don't know yet if they're among the players who've had it. Now, Virgil had it at Christmas time. Thiago has had it twice, and the hope will be that they don't have it again, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, in terms of injuries, we are in pretty good shape. It is just Ibu, for certain that we know, has been missing training and obviously missed a game. Bobby now back. We can all be very happy about that. Uh, we will try everything to cut the, def- the deficit to Manchester City, says Klopp. I hope the race will go to the end of the season, but I don't know. Everyone is excited about the opportunity for our title race. Our problem is that we have to play Brighton and then Arsenal away. In all the thoughts of a lot of people, three points, three points but there's 90 and another 90 minutes. So far, the boys did incredibly well. So why should I think we cannot go on? We will try everything. And that's the thing. Liverpool play Brighton this weekend, then they play Arsenal midweek. And that Arsenal game is going to be a tough one. Arsenal are in good form. Now, they don't generally turn up and perform all that well against the bigger clubs. They did give City a bit of a run. But aside from that, they've been largely disappointing against the big clubs this season, tending to beat up more on teams in the bottom seven than teams anywhere above that. So it's not a game we should be massively concerned by, but we will need to be at our best to go there and win. 
Uh, Klopp was asked about the situation at Chelsea. Obviously, he's got a friendship with Thomas Tuchel. So he does have some interest in it. But he said that for him, being Tuchel, the players and the employees, not a situation they are responsible. One man is really responsible, Vladimir Putin, in the first place. I don't know about Abramovich's role and all these kind of things, but over the years, you could guess that maybe he's pretty close. I think what the British government did is right, to be 100% honest, but it's still not cool for all the people at Chelsea and the supporters. I think that's very fair. Uh, the brilliant Luis Diaz. It's been a seamless transition for Luis Diaz into this Liverpool side, and the manager is enjoying it just as much as we are. Great, good, great, outstanding impact. Surprisingly quick and everything you could wish for. You never know when you sign a player how quick it will go. Luis has so many things he needs to have an impact here. And we saw that in the first moment. Then there's a difference between seeing it and training and bring it, bringing it to the pitch. You get what you see. Brilliant so far. Yeah, I, I look, it's weird. There's already been some people moaning that he scored one goal. But... They're ignoring the performance level. Like he's performing at an incredibly high level for us, having just joined six weeks ago. The guy has settled in flawlessly, already played a big part in a cup final. Every time he's on the pitch, he's involved in everything. He's electric on the ball, he's brilliant off the ball. Yeah, we'd like to see him score a few more goals, but. Those will come. Relax. This is a free hit. None of us thought we'd have Luis Diaz until maybe the summer. So all of this is a bonus. The real Luis Diaz is what we'll see next season. That's when we really need him. Right now, he's just a bonus. He's like finding 50 quid in a pair of jeans that you didn't know was there. Next season, you'll see more. But let the lad have a settling in period. He's already playing brilliantly. Crazy. Jurgen Klopp said Liverpool are not good losers. We are not good losers. Usually after the game, I have a little speech in the dressing room. Most of the time, quite nice to tell the boys how good they were. The intergame was slightly different, but in the end, when I look in the rise, I was in a better mood than the players. My first thought, we are through. The boys' first thought was how we lost. We have to show a reaction, and I'm pretty sure we will. And that's the thing. Like, we could afford to lose that game. We were not going to go unbeaten in all competitions from the West Ham game to the end of the season. We were going to have a loss somewhere. And why not lose a game you can afford to lose? Why not lose that one? You had to lose at some point. No team is going unbeaten in all four competitions from December on. It's just not happening. It's never happened before. It's never going to happen again. Even Arsenal in their unbeaten league season lost in the Cup, lost in Europe. We have to be perfect across the board so you can afford to lose that sort of game. Also on... This is Anfield. We have uh, two potential Liverpool lineups put together here. So let's have a look and see what they are suggesting for the game against Brighton. Uh, the first team has Allison, Trent, Matip, Virgil, Robbo, Henderson, Fabinho, Thiago, Salah, Jota, and Diaz. The second team has Allison, Trent, Matip, Gomez. Robertson, Henderson, Fabinho, Naby, Salah, Mane, and Diaz. I assume that is taking into account the potential for Virgil and um, Thiago to miss out if they do have the COVID one more time. <clears throat> Moving on then to Liverpool.com. The main piece is about Luis Diaz. Luis Diaz could be set to prove bizarre Colombian claim wrong as Liverpool prepares scary boost. Liverpool have taken, sorry, Luis Diaz has taken the life at Liverpool, but he is having issues in one area of the pitch and the Colombian legend believes it is eating him alive, but won't last. It's quite a drastic statement. 
Uh, so Festino Aspria, Tino Aspria, former Newcastle legend, believes that Diaz is overthinking in front of goal. I think Lucho has been eaten alive by it's been eaten up by anxiety. He's playing well, but when it comes to scoring, he's making the wrong decision in that play. We saw he had to score first in the Copa America. He scored an almost impossible goal against Brazil, and now he had the chance to score first time he couldn't. Anxiety is killing him. So look, it may well be that he is having some little anxiety issues, wanting to perform. Anxiety is probably the wrong way to put it, but he's putting pressure on himself that doesn't need to be there. Uh, Adam Lalana has spoken out about how well Diaz has settled in. I still can't believe how well Diaz has settled, having been a player that's gone to Liverpool and knowing how difficult it was to settle. Well, Adam was here six years and never settled. Uh, I'm not sure what Diaz's English is like, but coming from a different country in January and to play the way he has played is absolutely phenomenal. So nice words there from Lalana on Luis Diaz. Uh, Jurgen Klopp can develop his own Bernardo Silva as Liverpool patients sure to pay off. This would be Harvey Elliott. That's not a bad comp at all. It really isn't a bad comp. If you think of how Bernardo Silva plays, and I've long said the one player from City that will be perfect for Klopp is Bernardo Silva on and off the ball. He is absolutely sensational. So, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a fair shout. Uh, Liverpool could hijack 25 million Cristiano Ronaldo replacement as Manchester United wants sensible transfer. Cristiano Ronaldo could leave Manchester United this summer and the Old Trafford side are reportedly lining up his replacement. Um, Moussa Dembele of Lyon. Again, I said this, I think, yesterday. I like him. I don't think he's the level of the elite clubs. Now, look, it would us, you don't know. Maybe he joins us and kicks on and gets back on track to his best form. He is very talented, but his spell at Leon hasn't been hasn't been what was expected. When he was at Celtic, he was sensational. When he was at Fulham before that, he was very, very promising. I suppose the one thing that does crop up with him is he would be a homegrown player. So that could make him a very, very interesting addition. His first two seasons at Lyon, he got 20 and 24 goals. Things were going really well. Then last season, he had a really bad first half, got loaned to Atletico Madrid, and it was worse. This season, he's 9 and 22. He's not always starting. His first season at Celtic, he got 32 goals in 49 games. I know it's the Scottish League, but he was sensational. He's played a full season in the championship and scored 17 and 46. He's been around. He made his debut in 13 and 14, but he is still only 25. He'll be 26 this summer. He does class as homegrown because he was at Fulham from 16 to 20. So he would class as homegrown. That could make him the type of signing we might look for to replace Divock. And in that role, you wouldn't be against it. If he's the sixth forward, you wouldn't be against it at all. Liverpool won 63 million into midfielder as Roberto Firmino could seal Champions League transfer. Media Digest, Atletico Madrid reportedly lining up a move for Firmino. Um, I, it's the one club I could see him fitting at. Sevilla defender battle. Liverpool are set to directly rival Manchester City. For Diego Carlos, nonsense. Absolute nonsense. There is not a hope Liverpool will be in for him at this point, and no way City will want him either. Uh, Nicola Barella is on the radar of Liverpool, apparently, for £63 million. He would be a near-perfect signing for our midfield. He's absolutely everything you'd want in a midfielder, but bar height, but you can get away with that. Uh, Liverpool, £31 million transfer can complete midfield refresh with the Eredivisie's most valuable player. It wouldn't really complete the refresh. It might begin the refresh, but he is a good player. I mean, this is an attempt to claim that Harvey, Curtis and Tyler are all, 
you know, ready starters when the truth is not none of them really are ready to start every week. But Ryan Gravenberch is the player mentioned here. And uh, that could be that could be a very interesting fit for Liverpool. That could be a very interesting fit for Liverpool. He's very talented. He's had a bit of a dip this season, but he's only 19. He's likely to be inconsistent at 19. Does profile very well. Carries the ball brilliantly. Very good passer. Elite level technical ability. You certainly wouldn't be against signing Ryan Gravenberch. And if there's an option to sign Gravenberch and Chuameni, rather than maybe spending $100 million on Bellingham, I think I'd take those two. Uh, on AnfieldIndex.com, Stephen Smith has written a piece entitled Thank You for Your Service, uh, looking at players that could and probably should leave Liverpool this summer and potential replacements for them. So it's a very good piece. He goes through six players who could leave, potential replacements and other options for each one. So give that a read. There is a bunch of new podcasts out. There's a new Scouted on Brighton, uh, myself and Carl. We also talked about the Chelsea situation and some potential players from Russia and Ukraine that if they become available on free transfers, you might be interested in. Uh, there's a Euro Incision podcast, Nina and Themis, discussing the Champions League. There's a Money Talks. I joined Mo to have a bit of a deep dive into the Chelsea situation. The new rival recon is out. Harry Setti talking to Jim Frank, who is a very, very good voice on Brighton. Well worth your while giving that one a listen. Harry always gets great guests. Um, so, yeah, those are all out. Those are all new four podcasts for you to give a listen to if you haven't heard them already. I will say, if you haven't heard Mo's previous uh, episode with Matt Slater, Listen to that before you listen to the one from yesterday, just to give you more of an accurate timeline on the whole Chelsea shenanigans. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Hopefully we see a Reds win tomorrow, but I will see you on Monday no matter what. Take care. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.